Okay, so, let's go. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting Father, we bless your name, we worship you, we glorify your name, we lift your name high above every other name. Bless your name for leading us through our the days and therefore, and we brought us back safely. We are exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we are here again Amen. to study and to learn from you. We invite your presence to come and be with us, and let your Holy Spirit teach us, and let we that we are learning give us the retentive memory. Knowledge and understanding to continue to learn. To commit a resource person, your servant, you are going to use, but I use him mightily and bless him the more as we continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, we are going to we are going to continue from where we stopped last week. Okay, from what we stopped last week on teaching methods, teaching principles and methods, this is like the last last leg of this uh, um, of this uh, um, course we are going to take. So we are. Let me just share the slide. So that we can follow and participate effectively. Okay. Um, last week we, we ended up by see, um, looking at Jesus as as a teacher, as a teacher worthy to emulate. Now, in planning to teach. Remember the course is teaching principles and methods. In planning and in, in trying to teach, there are two important things that are very essential before one will embark on teaching. Um, and in planning to teach, we need to look at the preparing the teacher and preparing the teaching material. Preparing the teacher and preparing the teaching material. When we talk about preparing the teacher, we are looking at uh, the two essential elements that are required, which are spiritual readiness and diligent study. For a teacher, two important things that are required if you must teach effectively is number one, spiritual readiness. Number two, diligent study. The Bible has said, study to show yourself a good, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Also, in preparing the teaching material, what is required is planning a Bible book study. If you want to do a book study like Joshua, whatever, you need to plan it effectively. Plan how you are going to teach that study. Now, in spiritual readiness, there are five things that are involved. Before you embark on any, teach, any teaching, you need to pray for direction and guidance. You need to pray for direction and guidance. That God will give you direction on how you are going to pray as a part of preparing yourself as a part of spiritual readiness. Prayer for direction and guidance. Paul didn't take this kind of prayer for granted. He was always praying for guidance, always praying for direction that God will guide him in everything he wanted to do. So it is very, very critical in our um, preparing to teach. Prayer for um, direction and prayer for guidance. So we must know that these are very, very essential if you must make a good teacher, if you must be a good teacher. Why do you need to play, pray for uh, guidance? You need to pray for guidance that God will enable you uh, teach appropriately. The next one is prayer for discernment on the needs of the audience. You are praying for discernment. You, you don't understand the needs of the people you are teaching. Some of them came 
in broken hearts. Some of them came in need of healing. Some of them came in need of encouragement. So that's why you need to ask God to give you discernment so that you understand the need of the people you are teaching. The next one is pray for wisdom in determining the overall theme and purpose. If you want to teach, you need to ask God to give you wisdom to understand the overall theme and the overall purpose. Overall theme and over how you are going to divide the team, how you are going to subdivide them, how you are going to uh, guide and shape your thoughts. We call that uh, the uh, we call it the 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 line of thought. What is the line of thought? What is the central focus? What is the, the, the running thought that will guide you? So you need to pray for God to give you wisdom to determine the overall theme and purpose. What is the purpose of your teaching? Number four, you need to pray for illumination of the mind for understanding and insight. That God will illumine your mind for understanding and for insight. You know, there's a way your mind will be illuminated. You know, God will dispel every cloud of darkness in your mind and give you fresh understanding, fresh insight that will enable you to understand what you are teaching effectively. That is the fourth point of spiritual readiness. So what we have seen that prayer is very essential. The fifth one is prayer for enabling grace to understand the materials effectively. Yes. You need to pray for enabling grace that God will give you the grace to understand the material you are teaching effectively. So you are not teaching outside the context of that material. Why are we talking about these five points? It's because when you study the material to be taught, using the three steps we have highlighted, you will find out that you are going to teach effectively and make the desired impact. Note that a well-prepared teacher communicating God's mind will be a good teacher. If you can communicate the mind of God, it means you can be a good teacher. So these five points are the five points to be spiritually ready to teach. Now, for uh, diligent study, for diligent study, three things are involved. Three things are involved if you want to uh, embark on diligent study. The first one is observation. The second one is interpretation. The other one is uh, application. Um, uh, let me say this, that uh, these three steps we have highlighted, I will handle it in detail when we start doing a um, Bible study method and interpretation. So observe the text, interpret the text, and apply the text. So if you want to do a diligent study, you cannot, uh, you must observe this formula. This formula must be cardinal in your preparing to do a diligent study. Observe the text or the Bible passage. Interpret the Bible passage and apply it. So we cannot handle it in detail in this course. When we go to the next course, we will... Uh, handle it effectively. Now, on planning a book study, when you want to plan a book study, uh, you need to first of all ask yourself, what kind of study do I want to do? What kind of study do you want to do? Do you want to focus on expository, expository teaching, or systematic teaching, or the regular books of the Bible? So that is the first thing you need to ask yourself. Do I want to do a expository teaching? Do I want to do a systematic teaching? Do I want to do the regular books of the Bible? When we talk about expository teaching, it is when you take a set of passages and you want to do an exposition on it. Now systematic has to do with, maybe you take a particular theme and you look at several places where that theme occurs. For instance, I say you want to do a systematic teaching on covenant. You look at God's covenant with Abraham, God's covenant with Noah, God's covenant with Moses, God's covenant with David, God's covenant in the new covenant. That one can be in form of systematic teaching. Systematic teaching. Or you want to do a regular book study of the Bible. 
regular book study. These are the first things you need to do. Determine what you want to do if you want to plan a Bible study. When you determine that, the next thing you need to do is what are the steps you need to take in teaching the books of the Bible. The first step is select select a short book first. Select a short book. Now, if you want to uh, um, uh, do any kind of teaching, I will advise that you select a, a short book. Select a short book. Don't go for lengthy passage. Don't go for a, a lengthy place that you want to teach on. Select a short book. Now, read through it. Read through the book with me to look for the over overarching theme. If you select a, a short book, for instance, you select First Peter chapter 1, when you select it, read through it and look for the over 18, 18 team. What is the team? That is the central team, what we call central team. We did that when we were doing our study in Old and New Testament. What is the central team? Now, read it again. Read it. Read it very carefully. When you read it, what are you to look for as you read that short book you have opened? Look for the main divisions. The main, the, main, the main structural divisions are added. You ask yourself, what are the main structural divisions? What are the main headings? Now, when you note that, the aspect, the, the importance is that the division will help you to know how to structure, how you are going to teach. How, what are the divisions in that passage you have selected or in the book? And what are the headings that are there? When you note all these things, the first, thing, the next thing you need to note is to note the, to note the, know the important characters. What are the important characters you need to note? What are the important characters you need to note? What characters feature preeminently in that, uh, in that book, in that place you are studying? When you know the characters, the next thing you need to do is to endeavor to understand the content. What is the content? What are the contents in that place you are reading? What are the contents? So when you know the content as you are reading to know the characters, you make notes on each of these characters. Make notes based on your studies. Now, after making notes, understand the content of where you are reading, the content of that place. Understand that content very well. After understanding the content, identify the principles, the concept, and the truth to each. What are the principles? What are the concepts? What are the various truths? Identify them. For instance, when you are reading, say for instance, you are reading uh, Romans chapter 1. You understand uh, the content of Romans chapter 1, where Paul visited the uh, Roman and talked about not being ashamed to preach the gospel when he promised them to come back to stay up the, spi uh, the, the spirit in them. And also you notice when Paul talks about the judge, judge shall live by faith. So understand some of the principles, some of the concepts, the truth to each. Now, they confirm the team. Remember, you, you find out the team, you look at the divisions, the structure, the heading, Know the characters, important characters, understand the content, identify the principles, the concept, and truth to each, and reconfirm the team. So these are some of the things you need to do if you want to do a teaching. So you can see from here that it requires something very, very systematic. It requires something very, very systematic. Teaching is not just something you just rush into, and when you rush into, you rush out of it. So. You must, you, you must understand all these principles. Now, now, when you want to prepare an introduction, you want to prepare an introduction to uh, the, 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 what you want to do, or what you want to teach, or an overview of a book. The first thing you need to do is to find out the background of that book and the setting. The background and the setting. What is the background? What is the setting? Who are the author and what is the purpose of writing? Who is the author and what is the purpose of writing? After finding out who the author is and what is the purpose of writing, 
The next thing you need to do is that what is the team? The team and what is the basic content? What are the basic content? And what are the basic content? What, when we mean the team, the overarching team, what are the content within that team which you want to um, um, highlight on? Now you also note the importance of what is the importance of the importance of the study, importance of study or the significance of study. Each of all these books have all these things in them. The author and purpose of writing is in each of the books. The basic theme and the basic content is in each of the books. The significance of study is there. And finally, the application, what does it mean for us today? So, now, when you want to plan for each lesson, having done the first one we have Amen. highlighted, when you want to plan for the lesson, the first thing you need to do when you want to plan for a lesson is determine your goal. What is the goal of this lesson? What is the goal? What do I want to achieve? Please, can you mute yourself? I'm hearing background noise. Okay, determine the goal. What is the goal? Now, after determining the goal, then decide the most appropriate method. What kind of method are you going to use to actualize that goal? For instance, if the goal is that you want you want to um, um, you want to bring repentance, knowledge of repentance, to to the to your audience, or you want your audience to know how to give to understand biblical giving. Now, you are going to decide what method am I going to, or you can say, at the end of this teaching, I want my audience to understand what it means to give. Now, you say, determine the most appropriate method. Are you going to use lecture or, dis or discussion? Are you going to use lecture method to, to do that lesson or discussion method? You know, it is the goal that will determine the method. Are you going to use storytelling or demonstration? Remember that it is the goal that will determine the method. You don't just choose method for choosing sake. You choose method because it, you, have, you know the goal you want to achieve. And it is your method or goal that will determine the method you are going to use. Are you going to use question and answer or demonstration? Are you going to use question and answer or demonstration? Or would you like to use a mission of this method? Maybe you want to use 75% lecture, 25% question, answer, and discussion. So you have to determine what method you want to use to actualize it. So, you know, the mission method is actually a very good method when you want to introduce something new. Okay. Um, okay, when should there be less lecture and more student participation? When you want to review, maybe, uh, on old material, or when you want uh, development of practical skills. If you want people to acquire skills, practical skills, that means you are not going to use uh, lecture method. You are going to uh, review your method. Now, when you do that, you allocate time. Allocate time to each of the sessions. You are going to allocate time to each of the sessions. So when you allocate time, that what you do when you are planning for the session. Now, remember that teaching has, uh, there, there, there's a purpose for teaching. There's a main purpose for teaching. Number, now, 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 number one, when you are teaching, Teaching uh, individual lessons, you know, teaching involves instruction, it involves training, it involves exhortation, it involves encouragement and equipment. So, the main purpose of teaching is that you are instructing, you are training, you are exhorting, you are encouraging, you are equipping. So, unlike preaching that 
does not have all these features. Which it has only one feature or two features among these exhortation and encouragement, and also preaching and also comfort. But teaching has all these attributes comfort, correction, correct people to challenge, to cause life change. You cause life change. So you do this all when you are teaching. You do this all when you are teaching. Because you want significant thing to take place in the life of your audience. You want something you need to take place in the life of your audience. And that's why you are going extra mile to, to, to teach. Teaching is what causes lives to change. You want people's life to be transformed. You want people's life to be better. Then you um, you you go for teaching. Remember when we talk about instruction, instruction in righteousness, training in righteousness, exhortation, encouragement, and equipping in righteousness. So. What uh, 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 is entails in this act is that in, uh, in teaching, we go deeper, we go deeper, we go deeper. Now, as you, as you do this, you cause people's life uh, to change. Remember that you do this when you are inspiring people, you, call, you want to inspire people to... Uh, on the word of God that is profitable, word of God that is useful, the word of God that is can be used in every doctrine. So teaching has all these elements: instruction, training, exhortation, encouragement, equipping. So what what we need to now ask is that, and in, in teaching, what aspect of teaching? What mechanism you, you need to bring in so when you teach, you are you are equipping the people, you are equipping them, you are causing their lives to change, you are causing their lives to to experience a transformation. Before we go ahead to portray this point, I like someone to read for me Second Timothy chapter three verse fifteen to seventeen. Second Timothy three. Seven Timothy three, verse sixteen to seventeen. Is someone there? I'm there, sir. Okay, go ahead. Second Timothy three, sixteen and yeah. seventeen. As also in all his epistle, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unclean and unstable rest Second Timothy, they... 3. Second Timothy 3 Second Timothy 3 okay Second Timothy sorry, 16 and 17 okay, sorry. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, sorry. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Okay, so you see from here, thank you very much for that reading. You see, all scripture are for instruction. So, ma the main purpose of teaching uh, is that one of the main purposes of teaching is that people will be instructed in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. So, when you are teaching, you are promoting righteousness. You are promoting righteousness. So you see that uh, instruction in verse 16. Also, um, that place also talk about training. There's also training. 
Training in doctrine. You are training people in doctrine. Training in doctrine. So when we teach, we are training people in doctrine. How do we train in doctrine? There are people who listen to us who come with wrong beliefs. Wrong beliefs. So our training is to make them to drop the wrong belief and accept the right beliefs. There are some people who come with wrong character, wrong life. Our training is to cause them to, uh, that is why uh, uh, we have correct here. We are correcting their conduct, their way of life, to make them to adjust. Adjust from their wrong way of living to, um, to follow the right way of living. To drop their wrong, wrong conduct. Uh, attitude change, attitudinal change. That is why we teach to make sure that people's lives are changed. People's beliefs are changed from wrong belief to right belief. So you see all that, and that is why Second Timothy said that the man of God will be thoroughly furnished unto good work. That is to cost life to change. To cost life to change. So teaching is aimed at causing the life of people to change from bad to good. To challenge them into productive living. Into productive living. To challenge them into uh, living God's kind of life. To follow God's perspective of life. So that is one of the main purpose of teaching. We also teach to equip people. Equip. When the Bible says the man of God will be perfect, thoroughly furnished, unto good works. Sometimes when you see people not doing good works, not doing the right thing uh, among brethren, is it not because they have not been equipped unto good works? So we we are uh, we teach in such a way that we also equip people. Equip people. When you see people that are not doing good works in the church, in the assembly, wherever, it means that such people need to be equipped so that they can do good works. They need to be equipped so they can do good works. Um, 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 and in Austria, let me go back. That is why when you plan for your lesson, when you plan for your lesson, you decide. They go, what do you want to achieve through that teaching? What do you want to achieve? How do you want to achieve that goal? What method are you going to use to achieve it? Whether it is lecture, it's going to be storytelling, whether it's going to be demonstration, uh, uh, you allocate time for each session. You make an outline on what you want to teach, and how you want to explain it, how you want to support the explanation, how you want to prove it. Remember in teaching, you are explaining, you are supporting the explanation, you are proving it. You determine what you want to illustrate, examples you want to use. What kind of example do I want to use to illustrate my point, to support my point? What kind of application or response? you want to suggest what kind of application or response you want to su suggest you decide on your introduction how do you want to introduce it how do you want to introduce it remember that introduction is done uh, to create interest in the subject to attract your audience how do you want to attract your audience how do you want to attract them how do you want to demonstrate the importance of the lesson. Remember the way you demonstrate it, the more you the way you introduce it will either attract people or put them off. To either attract people or put them off. So you write out the main idea in a single sentence. You can write out the main idea and determine how best to communicate, communicate this, this idea. How is the best way to communicate this idea? Are you going to use a concept? Are you going to use a principle? Are you going to use a truth? So these are things you need to also determine. 
before you embark on that teacher? Are you going to use a concept? For instance, you want to teach um, about love. You want to teach about love. You may want to say, okay, use two love birds that are singing to each other. You may use love birds that are singing to each other as a kind of preamble or prelude to teach about love. So it is you that will determine what is suitable. Now, um, uh, if you, you, after teaching, you want your student or those who have listened to you to be able to apply what you have taught. You also plan a conclusion. You plan a plan a conclusion is to summarize what you have taught, summarize the lesson. You summarize it. You can also state the main idea. You can say the main idea of this lesson was to do this and that and that and that. Uh, in this lesson, we've been able to do this. We state what we have said previously. And you suggest possible application. What are the possible application? You point way forward towards the next lesson. You point way forward towards the next lesson. And you pray for the Spirit of God to empower your teaching. I'm going to pause for now to know if there's any reaction. Any reaction or any question? I know there's going to be a question and reaction. Anyone? Hello. Any reaction or any question? Yeah. I wanted to ask, are is it are, are there forms of teaching where when it is going on, uh, the the preacher tries to check um tries to check the tempo of the message, whether it's being received or not, and what's the best way of doing that? To see whether the people are actually flowing with the message. Or whether they are receptive to it, is there a way to check that? Or one just needs to give it whether they are following, whether they are understanding, whether they are assimilating or not. Okay, thank you very much. That's a very important question. Um, to answer this question, if I can uh, refer you back to number one, the our first note. If you go back there, you see that when we're talking about teaching, we said number one, the the teacher uh, perceived the audience from four perspectives. Number one, they are they are discoverers. They are discoverers. So you discover that the audience are discoverers. They are also um, uh, not only that they are discoverers, they are also, um, you, sorry, let me just uh, recall. Uh, Discover in the sense that when you, are, when, you are, when you are teaching, the people who you are teaching, you are not just teaching them, you are also giving them platform to discover. You are also giving them platform to be creative. You're also giving them platform to be expressive. You're also giving them platform to be involved, involvement. Involvement is part of um, uh, what makes teaching stand out from preaching. So in teaching, the teacher gives the audience platform to be creative, to be expressive, to, 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 uh, to be freer and to be involved, involved in that teaching process. So in this case, it is not just a, a, a one-sided affair, a one-sided affair. So the audience are also involved in the teaching process. It means that it is not out of place for you to periodically uh, find out the feedback. You can generate feedback. The feedback will be determined by the setting of that teaching. What kind of setting do you have uh, in the process of that teaching? So if it's a setting, maybe you are using projector, uh, you can just 
maybe make one or two person to react to recap what you have said that way you can it can help you to know the level of uh, digestion whether people are actually assimilating or not but teaching must for teaching to be teaching it must give people opportunity to to, to be creative to be expressive also to be involved in that teaching process if the people are not involved from this perspective of this study then that teaching um, is deficient so that's the first thing i will i, I will say that teaching is deficient if it doesn't give people uh, opportunity to express themselves to also to be discoverers and also to to um, to be involved so so when you do it that way that is one of the best way of checking the tempo that's one of the best way of checking the tempo of um, of the learning remember that a teacher is expected to spark interest you spark interest in the in the way you uh, start off spark interest from your learners and also you ensure that you convey a, a excitement and enthusiasm there must be that enthusiasm and also you create an atmosphere that is conducive for them to to be involved do you know there's a way you can teach once you teach you create an atmosphere where people don't want to be involved when you especially when you have a posture of no it all people don't want to be involved but when you have a posture of before you move so that is uh, what I, I don't know that that satisfy your question yes yes okay like when we said you know we said no i recorded it on youtube so what happened is that uh, teaching when we talk about teaching it is most effective and best learning process you know where teaching involves one of the so five things that a teacher must uh, uh, five culture a teacher must cultivate in the process of teaching is motivating the participant involving them preparing them create an avenue for association and assimilation so it is very very important that we know that uh, these five basic learning principles are applied whenever we are teaching any other interaction any other question any comment or question any comment maybe my second question if uh, my second question a follow up if from okay. from the analysis you feel is not flowing you need to change some of the illustration or you still maintain it. Is there a way where when you sense it, you might need to change your pattern? Is it advisable? Yes, it's very, very, very much advisable. Sometimes, um, you know, the variety is the spice of life. Um, there might be iceberg in between teaching. Iceberg in between teaching or uh, maybe uh, in the course of teaching, there is a kind of bridge in flow of the teaching. A, a smart student, a teacher can even call a smart student to come and maybe recap. Um, you, 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 you survey the audience. After surveying the audience, you single out one person who will come and do a recap. And uh, at that point, you discover that there is generally lack of understanding or people are not don't, don't seem to be flowing you can either you generate a discussion at that point you bring a story or you can also bring an iceberg uh, maybe an iceberg of or bring a kind of short break of tell people to stretch up or but but there must some be something that will just do to kind of reject interest to make sure that people's interests are reignited you can also call up a bright student who will come and just summarize what you have done within that period. You know, that is also part of the involvement process. 
involving a bio student who will come and do a kind of a sum of a summary of what you have said. And after that student will do that, or one participant will do that, it will help others to pick courage. Ah, after all, somebody among us is already catching up. So, but the point is that the four methods we talk about, question and answer, lecture, illustration, all of them can also be combined in one teaching setting. All of them can be combined. The most important thing is that the, the goal of the teaching is that the people will understand. Whatever method that can be applied to ensure that the people understand is allowed. Like, personally, when I'm teaching Bible study, or when I'm teaching Sunday school, I don't like to dominate the discussion. I like to tell someone, tell people to read the question, read the introduction, do almost everything there. So what I do more or less is more of be a facilitator. So you can also do a teaching by being a facilitator, not to dominate the discussion, but um, at the end, you still pick up some of those. The essence of teaching is to make sure that Apart from people who understand, also make sure that as much as possible, everyone participates in that teaching. So all the methods like you have uh, asked can be put together in one. But the goal, the goal of the, the goal you want to achieve will actually determine whether you are going to do a mixed method or one method. Don't just use the whole method for 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 using sake. It is, for instance, an audience where People are not talking freely. I know there's where people are shy in talking. Then question and answer, storytelling can be very, very good at that point. Then lecture is not the best in an audience where people are not talking freely, where people are shy. Once you use lecture method, then you push the people back into their shell. Any other question or any other comment? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, welcome. Any other comment? Any other comment? No other person has talked. Ikeju Ai Kokoro, any comment? No, for now. Okay. So, okay. Um, we have done a summary of teaching methods starting from uh, the importance of teaching over preaching. We say why preaching is confined by uh, definition is means proclamation, exhortation, and it's limited to um, somehow poopy setting and also structure. We, we say that teaching has a wider scope. It involves instruction, explaining, training, and equipping. Uh, we have also looked at teaching um, as having a purpose of causing people to learn and giving people platform to be educated. By education, people acquire knowledge and skills. And by learning, people are experience diverse changes in their life. We have also seen the biblical basis of teaching, that teaching was commanded. Teaching was uh, commanded by God to Moses, and we saw the educational value of teaching, and as are devoted himself to teaching, Jesus commanded that we teach as a church. And even when he ascended in heaven, Jesus taught until he ascended. The early church emphasized on teaching. Paul also instructed Timothy to teach, and we've seen the necessity of expository teaching. So on this note, we are going to bring this uh, course to an end. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who has any question or any strong comment before we say the closing prayer. Okay, sir. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to make a plea before my question. Uh, yeah. Go ahead.
Go ahead, we are hearing you. Okay, sorry, I just went off. I said I want to first of all make an appeal there for the last week uh, lecture records. Uh, and uh, that of the church history, uh, yes, uh, lecture as a note. If it's not available. Hello? Yeah, he's not. I say I'm, I want to make a appeal first before my question. Okay, okay, go the ahead. Record, yeah, yeah, the record of last week's uh, lex lecture. Uh, if it can be shared for us. Okay, I'll do my best. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And the uh, lecturer's uh, note on that uh, church history. Okay, I will share it. I will share it. I have the notes. Okay, sir. Then my question goes this way. This uh, teaching in, in this uh, church, uh, uh, in the church, discipline, is it part of the, the teaching in the church? Discipline is, a, um, of course, in a, in a wider sense, it's part of teaching, but it's a discipline on its own. And the, in the context of our uh, teaching method, you know, this course is all about teaching method and principles. In this sense, discipline is not part of uh, this teaching, but is a corrective measure. If you look at it from aspect of correction, when we say teaching has element of correction, you can say that is a corrective measure, but another discipline on its own that we are not covering our, uh, it, it is not within the focus of our discussion. But in, in the wider sense, uh, discipline is part of the corrective measures in teaching. Okay, sir. Now, it's like uh, in our days where uh, pastors, or let's say pastors or preachers feel very locked down in implementing teaching in our, in our local churches. You know, when you started the, the course, you, 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 you try to put the, 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 compare the two. Which one is uh, obtainable in our local areas? And most people could not, but we could not be able to bring out uh, uh, facts but what i'm seeing is that it's like the preaching is gaining more into the church than the teaching and that is why it's very difficult for for us to really hold our membership tight because the trying to know what the what the what the audience want if they cannot get what they want they will leave when you come and they, they may not have that patient to receive the teaching the pastor or the preacher may opt for preaching to to encourage them to stay. So in this our own church setting, how can we manage the two, the preaching and the teaching, and making sure we have our membership there to stay? Okay, thank you very much. All of them have their own place. They have their own advantage. They have their own place. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, preaching is not uh, uh, important, you know. Uh, preaching is very important. Jesus Christ preached, he taught, he healed. But the essence of this course is to revive the culture of teaching. When you see, when Jesus said, go into the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them all that I have commanded you. When you talk about discipleship, it is teaching that actually prepares people for the second coming, for discipleship, that make people to remain steadfast in the faith. So preaching is, has its own place, but teaching is more, more, uh, has more intent, more intensive, it has, more, it's more laborious. Why people are not doing more of teaching is that the labor involved in preparing teaching. You can see what we have done now. The labor involved is so intensive. And people prefer to go for the easier way out. And that is why it is, uh, they are going for preaching. But the essence of it is to prepare us as commission lay preachers. So we'll go back to the culture of teaching. Go back to study the rudiment of teaching. It takes quite a lot to sit down, to plan for teaching, to plan for all what we are doing now. It takes quite a lot. So we need to go back to our drawing board discipline ourselves, determine that, yes, as good as preaching is allowed, preaching is commanded, 
But teaching is what takes the people, what sustains the church, and that is what will sustain the church even in 21st century and beyond. So I, I think the essence is for us to lead the vanguard, to be on the lead. Uh, forget about those who are just measuring on teaching or preaching. Let us go back to our drawing board and follow everything we have learned in this uh, study, teaching method. By next course, when we are going to do Bible study method, you will see more of this. Uh, we start it from next week Thursday. Bible study method, same time, same, same week. Okay. In that sense of any other prayer, we want someone to lead us in prayer. Our time is almost up. Who is iPhone? Okay. Let that just someone lead us in prayer. Pray as Jesus, but to help us to know the demands of the scriptures. But we are not going to have a good day. Amen. The grace and fellowship. Amen. Amen. The Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Guys. The love of God. 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 Of God